Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Quickly Checks status bar. Thursday, January the 23rd uh, edition of the SCRF community call. We uh, have these calls weekly. It's where we engage with the wider community. <clears throat> we'll throw open the doors, um, get people in, who are engaged with us through different frameworks or deeply embedded into the core of the operations or people that are just interested in what it is we have going on. Give everyone an opportunity to uh, do just that, figure out what we have going on. So we generally have presentations. Sometimes we get into philosophical debates about uh, various nuances of our mission. Uh, we do uh, round robin sometimes, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a skull or another one, but it's been done. So yeah, we do round robin sometimes just to talk about what people are up to. And uh, we see where the where the call takes us. Today, we have a presentation from our very own head of engagement, Paul Zuby. Um, Paul is going to talk to us a bit. I'm not going to steal his thunder. Um, and maybe I'll just do a little hand, bit of a handoff there. Uh, oh, yeah, here's what I do want to do. Um, as Paul is talking, it's entirely, well, we'll ask him whether he wants to be interrupted or not as he goes or whether he wants questions at the end. But I encourage people to uh, be thinking about questions you can ask Paul. Uh, or anybody else that's related to this topic. We are extremely interested in a back and forth. So this is not a one-way uh, ecosystem here. We want to hear what everybody has to think about things. If they have suggestions or insights or they want some clarity, um, please let us know if you're too shy to interrupt. Uh, keep track of those questions. Uh, type them in the sidebar if you want them to be read out for you later on or um, uh, just keep them in your back pocket, write them on a post-it note, whatever it works for you. And then when uh, we're done, uh, we would love to have you on the mic um, and ask your questions. It's great for uh, the historical record because we record these things and we post them on our YouTubes. And uh, it's super handy if people uh, read out the questions that they have. So uh, things don't get lost in the uh, uh, transcription in the future. All right, there we go. Uh, Paul, I'm going to hand it off to you. What do you have for us today? Maybe I have the inability to unmute. All right, there we go. Uh, so today I am going to be starting a proposal process, or I am going to be making a proposal uh, for an improvement to the forum by adding a community section. And so I would like to echo um rich's recommendation that people keep track of questions i want to make sure that we do have this discussion uh here as well as on the forum which is going to be part of this pitch so uh on the in the current meta section uh, i'm also in the process of writing up a topic for people to also have discussion there so we can kind of move forward on this proposal and be thinking about how this could have some benefits uh, some of the ideas that i'm going to present here today I'm not fully wedded to, right? They're just kind of some open brainstorms about what we could do for this category. Um, others, uh, I think I'm a little bit more solid on that. I think that I definitely would want those and I'll try to make sure that I identify those uh, throughout the presentation. So just kind of get started, right? The thing that I would like to make sure that we address in these types of proposals, like why would I do this thing? Like, so I don't wanna just add something to the forum to just add something to the forum. Um, I think to some extent, based on conversations we've had in these calls and some other calls that maybe it's a little obvious, but I wanna make sure that we're covering all our bases and kind of what is, and covering what is inspiring me to make this proposal here. Kind of go through the proposal, but then I'm also hoping that throughout a variety of this pres or at the end of this presentation, we'll have plenty of time to have some discussion about what would work, what wouldn't work. Um, I mean, I am in some ways proposing some more attention be on the forum itself, and so that means some resources would have to be dedicated to doing some moderation and maintenance there. So these are all things that I'd want to make sure we discuss and have some feedback on and what the next steps would look like. So first things first, though, this but why. So this call is actually a really good example of the but why. Uh, so we have some community activity. A lot of that community activity, like the output of that community activity, uh, happens on our Discord or it happens in calls like this. We can have really good discussions. Uh, sometimes we have guests come in. Sometimes we have a little bit more of a jam session. Either way, right? we have some output. 
right? People continue to have conversations in Discord as a result of these meetings or because of reading groups or um, because of proposals that people have in our chat. Um, overall, the opportunity to engage in kind of long tail conversation around that is kind of variable, right? So if you happen to live in a time zone where this meeting is convenient for you, you can come. If it's not as convenient for you, you still can see a recording. But the thing that I'm hoping that we have at the end of today, kind of the discussion about what happened in the community call or feedback, that kind of gets lost. Sometimes it happens in chat or not. All right. And then also on top of that, the, a lot of the community activity that we do a little bit suffers from uh, visibility being low. So even when we do have some really good, interesting output into, let's say, our chat and Discord, we end up losing some of that because it scrolls up. Right? While it's not exactly ephemeral, there is an ephemeral quality to chat. Uh, and the forum, I think, is a possible way that we can kind of solve for this problem. So kind of the glorious future that I see for this community section and the problem that I'm hoping to solve for is that this community output that we have, just like our research output, has a space on our forum that creates and increases opportunities to engage with what SCURF is trying to do on a community side. So. Right. We are trying to socialize our practices. We're trying to get more people engaged with various projects. We're trying to help people understand uh, what SCURF is and how SCURF does its thing. Right. We will have more opportunities for people to engage with that process uh, in kind of this long tail way, uh, which is one of the values that SCURF has. It also helps us increase some of our visibility. I think the four verticals also have unique benefits from these. Obviously, I am biased uh, with my interest in the engagement side of things, being head of the engagement vertical. Uh, so things like the source cred implementation threads had really good engagement. A lot of people engaged and commented and liked and came back to that thread over and over. Uh, and so that was kind of an engagement win for us. We see it similarly, this really good engagement around the DSI proposal that is on the forum, right? So I don't, like those are really good engagement opportunities. Uh, it, it's a output that we can kind of point to of, you know, SCURF is doing interesting stuff within our community and being community driven. Uh, I think this also helps discovery. I don't want to necessarily speak for discovery or the other verticals, but I see that, you know, here is you can point to what is SCURF up to and how does SCURF do this and that increased visibility I think is very valuable. Uh, I think that this also helps with outreach, right? So outreach has the ability to say, hey, like look at what happens here when they are trying to bring a target in. Um, and I also even think that there's some benefit here for content. While this is a community section of their forum, I think that content wise, there is the ability to form a habit because you know that's one of my secret goals uh, we, we form a habit of people coming to the forum on a regular basis not just around a particular piece of content by having highly engaging community type of content that exists on the forum i think that we get people on the forum more if we get people on the forum more we might also have some opportunities to get people excited about the content that is on the forum and form a nice little habit for people to be engaging with but also potentially generating content so uh, i think that there's a lot of benefits here beyond just kind of the where does this community output go so what am i proposing that this then kind of looks like so right now i think we have some content that would readily fit into a community section already so we've had a couple of goes at some reading groups we have another reading group coming up here um, that's going to be a little bit more internally focused but we know that there's interest from some of the various threads that already exist on the forum that people are interested in the idea of reading groups. This might give it a more focused location to do that. Uh, so both these internal types of reading groups like Eugene is uh, experimenting with, as well as the external ones that we have tried to experiment with in the past are all possibilities here. Um, we also, uh, for those of you who have kind of been following some of the stuff in the chat and the stuff with the source cred implementation, Right, we're moving away from committees. We're going to start calling these guild reports. Right, so we have these guilds uh, that have some community responsibility and their stakeholders. Right, so source cred is one of them. Right, they have these meetings, trying to decide what all to do. 
Uh, right now, we're kind of capturing some of that information in issues, uh, but it would make sense in a community type of tag that we could, or a community section that we could keep and focus on like what this group is doing in a more long tail way uh, that it doesn't have the interface of something like GitHub. Uh, there's another guild that is kind of forming around what we do in our chat, like how does our Discord arrange and what all uh, do we need for that chat to be successful? This is also kind of a community initiative, and so it would be great to be able to kind of follow along with what that guild is up to. I think not only does that help the guild to accomplish its work, I think it also helps the, us to be able to point to and kind of get to that visibility problem, right? So that's the type of content that I think could live here so that it's a robust category. Uh, last, we have these ideas of community grants. At the moment, uh, to the best of my knowledge, the closest to a fully community grant is something like comment of the month, which has kind of been churning along. Uh, Woodrow has done a good job of trying to keep that going, uh, but you know, if we gave that a place on forum to like really exist, so nominations can happen on the forum, a discussion about what makes for a good nomination can happen on the forum, outcomes of that grant can happen on the forum. I think that gives these types of things good visibility. And so these are types of products or content types that we already kind of have at SCURF that I think just readily fit into a community section on the forum. I do have some ideas though, this is kind of more where I'm doing my brainstorming of some additional categories that I think or additional content types that would help them fill out this category and potentially have us doing some interesting things. So calls like this, right? The community call, as I'd mentioned before, we often have really good discussions. Um, when guests come, we often run out of time to keep engaging with that guest or engaging with some of the questions that get raised during our community calls. The advantage of our forum is that we can break out of the call. We could kind of summarize that call in a community call content type, be able to capture some of the links, connect the ideas to things that already exist in the forum so that this community call doesn't exist just as a recording, but has a global and long tail opportunity to be engaged with. Additionally, I think there's a kind of related content type of just kind of scheduling this. So as a community, like as we kind of are aware of the various projects that are happening or what types of issues or opportunities that SCURF is facing, it would be great to be able to make the calendaring of the community call and uh, what type of priorities we want there, what type of topics we want there, uh, something that we could more openly engage with. Uh, so hopefully that this is something that we could put into this community call, or I'm sorry, this community section as well, the ability to just discuss what all we want to see in the following or the next community calls to kind of help people with an agenda and prioritize what we're going to be engaging with. There's also been in the past some discussion in these calls and other calls, the idea of, you know, how do we help people level up uh, in Web3 spaces? Uh, and one of the ideas that kind of got battered around a little bit and that I think could potentially fit into this community section is the idea of a SCURF recommends content type, or at least a SCURF recommends thread, uh, which might be something that we could collaboratively, de uh, collaboratively develop. So if there are really good resources that help people explain Web3 concepts or Web3 projects, we as a community can have discussions about them and very similar to some of our other threads that exist in other categories like the Notable Works. Right, we can collaboratively discuss whether or not that's something that we as a SCURF community would want to recommend, and then we can have that update a repo and we get to maintain that. So if people need resources, they've come to SCURF and we want to help them have success here at SCURF, but maybe there's some knowledge gaps that they have. Uh, this is a place where we as a community can co-create a resource to help them. Uh, there's also been some discussion of the idea of just kind of doing some chat roundup. Really good stuff happens in our Discord chat regularly. But again, because of the quasi ephemeral nature of chat, sometimes that gets missed. So we could do some roundups, put that up on the forum. Here is a very loose type of discussion post. Uh, my ideal goal would be these types of loose chat roundups eventually result in some type of a proposal that produces some type of content down the line, be it a discussion post or a 
a research summary because someone identified here's a really important piece that needs to be discussed uh, and summarized for SCURF. Uh, and hopefully that would be something that could start with a chat roundup so we can think about it more before it scrolls away and out of our minds. Um, and then also I'm just very interested in the idea of having key questions and notable works in pretty much all of our categories. I, would, I mean, this is a different type of category for sure, but I think that there is some value of us still thinking about what are the key questions that face our community, right? And how can we discuss them in this kind of dynamic and public way? Uh, and then also, what are the notable works? What are SCURF's best practices and how do we come to agree that those are our best practices, uh, but maybe even more excitingly for me is what type of research backs up those best practices. So the notion of this reading group that we are about to do uh, with impact networks, right? There is some research that is potentially going to impact how SCURF members think about things, think about the Web3 world or organizing, right? Uh, if that has an opportunity to leave a reading group and inform some of our best practices, I think it would be fantastic if we could kind of maintain those resources and kind of link people to those resources as well. So these are some proposed new content types uh, that would help populate the community category. In addition to some content types, I think there's also some tags potentially that could help us make these useful for people as well. Uh, the first two, the idea of decision and proposal, um, I think that this helps the community category, but I think it also could help across the entirety of the forum to help signal types, a different type of information as opposed to what is that thread about. It is more like what is happening in that thread so that people could find that. So uh, a decision tag would identify a thread as being a decision is about to be made or needs to be made or, you know, historically has been made. It helps us capture some of the organizational memory, right? So what decisions have SCURF made? We could do, uh, we could use that tag and find out all the decisions that have been made uh, through SCURF. The same with the proposal tag. What types of proposals are people making about how to make the community better? We have a proposal or kind of a more traditional research proposal type of category on the forum already. This tag might help people be able to find all of the different proposals. Um, maybe not to get too tag crazy, but I would also suggest, or at least I'm open to a discussion around whether or not the other content types in the previous slide that I uh, have proposed would also potentially get some type of a tag. Uh, but overall, I think these tags help people to navigate and interact with this type of community work. I think that there is a lot of value to the type of community work um, that we do in these types of calls and on Discord that has a lot of value to being out in the open. And now I'm essentially pretty interested in how do we overcome some of the potential barriers or remaining questions, um, as well as things that I have not thought about. Uh, but some of the things that I proposed here, like those decisions, right? Well, someone has to own what those decisions are, right? Is this a single person? Uh, could we expand that guild model so that there are people who are responsible for certain types of decision making? So if that best practice uh, is a content type that we have, right? There's going to be decisions about whether or not we adopt that as a best practice at SCURF or not. Is that something that we would have a guild about? Is that something that goes to a more hierarchical type of decision making? Um, these are types of things that we would need to figure out. Additionally, this increases some moderation, right? So more activity on the forum is fantastic. More engagement on the forum also potentially means that there's more moderation but also just maintenance tasks that have to be here right if some of these categories are working uh, as i'm proposing that they would work things like best practices would you know potentially go to some type of repo um, so that they could be seen by all for always right that's a maintenance task we want to make sure that that um, is something that we consider as we think about the different content types here there's also questions about how this might interact with what Scurf.io and GitHub are currently doing. Uh, there is a lot of value to some redundancy, uh, but we wouldn't want to overdo, overdo it with redundancy. And so if part of what Scurf.io is trying to accomplish is help pull out and highlight some of our community work, then 
maybe that's not necessarily a thing that has to be on the form or not. That's an open question for me. Um, and then I'm also just interested in how much research is going to go into this, right? So I, as I mentioned, am really interested in that kind of notable works uh, driving this community. Um, how do you do really good reading groups, right? There are people who think deeply about this. Uh, so how much of this stays what I might consider casual community, right? Meaningful but casual community chat, like what happens on the chat already and how much of it would we then have an expectation if you were entering into our community section on the forum they're like you better back up what you have to say like this is not just a i have a preference uh, this is a i have a well-supported reason for why i want to make this suggestion or why i think we should do our reading group this way right so how much uh, research is going to go into this or do we expect and if that's the case how do we enforce those types of questions? So those to me are some of the challenges or questions. Um, at the end of the day, I still think that this is a valuable thing for us to have on our forum. And because I mentioned that I wanna make sure we have plenty of time to chat, I wanna make sure we have plenty of time to chat. So um, that's kind of my presentation for today. And now I would love to get into some question and answers. And I heard some chat stuff here. Yeah, Chris, go for it. Thank you very much. Um, I I think in in looking at everything, it's it's really awesome, and I really uh, am excited to see this play out. Um, I think there is this element of everything that you discussed is something that is reflecting the need to react and to modify the organization and i think in the sense of like the organization is constantly in flux but it's really difficult to say we're one thing or another when we're also trying to react and modify ourselves so i think this is actually going to make it really easy to articulate where we are in our evolution but also with the understanding that we are actively trying to continually react to the community and also update our standards and practices in accordance to that there is a sense of i i'm averse to the notion of a static and uh fixed culture so i i am of the mind that this type of organizational movement is a really positive thing so I, i'm like it's not it's not so much of a question it's like i just want to uh, assert like i really think this type of thing is like a positive uh movement for any organization but specifically scurf to take this sort of active evolution uh and reactive role to the community I appreciate that feedback, Chris. Um, Stephanie, I see that you had a question in here on the idea of uh, DOI resources. Like, could you get into that a little bit more? What did you mean by that? Yeah, I'm just curious about whether or not it would help drive people to surf if there were DOI resources. I'm thinking about one other organization I know that like They'll create, um, let's say, like a list of best practices for online meetings, create a DOI resource about it, and then put that everywhere so they can get the name of their organization out and have those things start to get some some uptick. Um, so I'm curious if that might also be. Um, can we also get a, first for the room well. a description of what DOIs are? Uh, of course, I know what they are. Exactly, uh, but digital object identifiers. So like it's go. a number that is tagged to that specific or set members that are tagged to that specific thing so that you can come back and reference that it's that specific one. I mean, I do think that the type of output does long-term benefit SCURF as well. Um, I mean, so I do not know overall what SCURF's current position on whether or not we would be producing um, white papers, let's say, on how to do things. Uh, in the past, we have kind of talked a little bit about 
generating some frameworks, right? So we've had some success doing this, and here's a framework. Maybe maybe that's kind of what we could DOI um, and provide for the world a little scurf franchises. Uh, but I like that idea. Um, I, I'm taking that as a note right now. Umar, I saw that you had your hand up. Hey, thanks. Uh, great presentation. Uh, I really like the idea of the community proposal. And uh, one thing that I really especially want to say that I would get value from is the SCURF recommend section, because um, I really like having the ability to see, like, here are these curated resources uh, that you can learn from and, and dive into. Um, one question I have is, what is going to be sort of the, like, line between what goes in the chat and what goes in the community forum? Is it like up to the poster to decide, or is there like a, a recommendation? Yeah, that is an excellent question um, that I have not gotten to yet when it comes to like, what is that line? Um, I think right now, the um, what, what would guide me is kind of the intention a bit of the poster. What is the poster trying to do? Um, there is some kind of repeat material that I would su suspect that we would regularly see so uh, with some of our legacy content that i think would fit in this category like reading groups right i would want to make sure that all reading group work right if it's kind of work to support the reading group that that would be on the forum and like what book are we going to choose next when are we going to do this uh, who's summarizing uh, things like that um, i would expect that that would probably be happening on the forum. Whereas in the chat, uh, I would expect a little bit more like maybe just casual mention like, hey, I'm really excited for next week's uh, reading group, something along those lines. Um, the, the same would kind of go with the things like guild reports, right? It is doing the work. Um, right now, the forum is kind of our, the forum is our output. GitHub is in one of the places where we do some work. And I feel like chat is one of the places where we talk about how to or who is going to do some work uh, for the community section at least right now there's not a whole bunch of i won't say need i don't necessarily think that for many of the community projects that we're currently working on that github is necessarily the place for it so something like a reading group i don't think needs to have uh, let's say a board or it doesn't have to be broken into issues. I can be persuaded the other way. Like I, um, I'm not married to that idea, uh, but I think instead that that is something where the work of community could be happening on the forum, uh, whereas like kind of the socialization of community is something that would be happening on the chat. I'm not entirely certain if that answers your question well enough, though, Umar. I, I think it does definitely. It sounds like it's really about the the depth and the permanency of the discussion. Like the more. The more time people spend uh, rounding out their thoughts, the more it should be something that goes on the forum so that it doesn't get maybe lost in chat. Um, and, and also maybe just like the forum is a place for deeper conversations, whereas chat can often be like quick, snappy, like, hey, what's up? How's it going? Uh, so that, that makes a ton of sense to me. Um, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I kind of have a sense also. Like, so in, in the past, for those of you who have been in our chat for some time, uh, you may have noticed that occasionally um, someone will get a prompt to, hey, could you go put that in the forum? And when it is research-based and someone has already kind of done a very strong argument in chat, uh, I think the the incentive and the motivation to kind of pull that over to the forum in the past, like we haven't captured that well enough. Uh, here with at least the community thing, if someone has kind of a community idea, I think being able to do at that point say that's a cool idea could you go here and then flesh it out um i think that that might be a little bit more likely uh, and that is the hand that i was looking for yeah rich go ahead i wanted to uh give it a couple minutes before i start sucking out all the oxygen here um so I, what i'm interested in yeah, from a super high level, is these notions of agency and emergent governance and self-direction and things like that when it comes to communities. Um, I think that's kind of the one of the goals of the entire DAO crypto thing that we got going on here. SCURF is not a perfect model of that world because we're we're extremely mission focused. We're doing a specific thing. There's no revenue models here and stuff, and so there's some ambiguity about how community driven is scurf um or what would be the motivations for that but 
I'm very interested in any opportunities we can take to start creating some self-directed activities here. And so we have the source credit team or guild um, and the chat guild and stuff. And so is the community uh, category in the forum and some of those, actually, I can't try to remember the slides. So you had like different types of tags. Those things sort of implied that there's decision-making processes and consensus processes going on here. Is the idea that this section of the, the forum is where the community self-organizes and figures out things to do and do activities and stuff? Yeah, so I think that this is where the community can either self or be nudged uh, to organize around a thing. Um, and then it is capturing uh, their action and being able to give the community some ability to make some choices. Like, as you mentioned, we are not a perfect model uh, of a DAO. So um, I would not necessarily say that everything that happens in the community section, therefore, um, necessitates that SCURF has to do it. Um, I think that, that is, that, that's going to be one of the moderation, like, so one of those challenges, those open questions, uh, maybe to put a stronger point on it, is one of those moderation challenges is if a project is being proposed, uh, but let's say that that project would um, require that SCURF dedicate uh, several research, you know, a ton of resources into accomplishing something, and overall SCURF as an organization sees that as maybe aligned with, but not as mission focused, right? That's gonna be some moderation work that happens there uh, that tries to, you know, maybe re-guide that into a less resource intensive uh, type of situation, something along those lines. So, um, but I do think that the community section gives people some opportunities to, get excited about maybe mission aligned or uh, mission parallel types of projects that help the SCURF experience be a better SCURF experience for people. And that's, I think, we have a lot of interest in encouraging and giving people the tools and the visibility that that happens, uh, both as an organization, I think that's a win for us, but I also think individually that would be a win for us. Very exciting. Um maintenance of this new section is going to be an issue as well so it's a lot of work um and i think that umar or somebody sorry i drifted for a second i just talked about this in a previous conversation or maybe as you um but we have different venues and those venues have different um attributes i suppose and so our youtubes are long 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 tail discovery of um highly dense material our chat is uh, the temporal window there is like 24 hours to be involved with something that just happened or else it's lost to this mist of time. Um, our forum is longer coordination, but there's additional friction and, and overhead associated with engaging with those things. Trying to figure out what happens in what venue has been a challenge for us, uh, particularly when um, people i was about to say you're doing the wrong thing in the wrong place but that's not it's not possible but when when um coordination or activities or deep nuance or intellectual insight occurs in the chat that provides value for like like i said 24 hours and what we want is that value to live for six months on the forum and so how we can get that those coordination efforts and all those things that are happening in chat organically into the forum is still kind of an unsolved problem for us do you have any thoughts about how we can incentivize that or reward it or encourage it? So incentivize the maintenance component specifically? Well, maintenance and moderation, I guess, is, yeah. is getting that stuff out of the chat in, into the forum where we can yeah. really pull things apart. Yeah, so I mean, um, one thing I think, so this gives us an opportunity to remind people, so one from kind of an incentive perspective, this reminds I think it gives us an opportunity to remind people that um, forum activity is now connected to an incentive mechanism, which is source cred. So uh, currently, if we're just kind of chatting about what we think should be happening at SCURF, or this would be a great reading group, or even what we are doing in this community call right now, which is some effort and some work and some thought that everyone is putting into this. Uh, when we kind of take this, summarize it, have discussions about it, 
uh, in a community section on the forum. We're also developing some cred on that as well, whereas in our other properties, we're not currently doing that. Um, but I also think right, like in the past, just observationally, it appears that we get more more willingness to do some of the community stuff on forum uh, as opposed to some of the maybe harder work of responding to discussion posts and things like that one of the other reasons in addition to that agency thing that you had previously brought up is i at least have a hypothesis that i um am going with right now that if we can get people into the habit of going to the forum regularly because they go to a community call forum post and like, this is really neat. Uh, one of the things that gets lost in our community calls that I've noticed in the past is like people drop like, oh, that reminds me of this forum post or it reminds me of this forum post. And so we get a really cool set of links in the, uh, the chat. Well, what if we could capture those also that goes into this forum post um, about the community call if I can get someone into the habit of going to the forum regularly, I can probably also encourage them to leave just the community section um, into the rest of the forum um, just through some habit. I think we can also then work on some other incentives. So, like, so in these community calls, we sometimes talk about other incentives we have, like bounty programs that we're working on and things like that. Um, if we have on forum reminders or it's just really easy to click because I'm on the forum already, um, I think that that's potentially uh, a quasi solution to that but i do not have a perfect answer to that question at this point cool um perfect answers are hard to come by but here's an, another interesting thing um that you touched on too is that we talk about how to operationalize our, our processes and the things that we're doing and categorize all of our, our different areas of activities and we come up with our verticals so we have engagement in content and discovery and outreach that sort of covers off the bucket of things this FIRF does. But every time we get into that, we realize that there is like this fifth component that's potentially the biggest one that we don't talk about very much. That's not super formalized and that's community, right? So we have our community actors that are doing things that are looking for stuff to do and creating a specific identity or a meeting place or a location where all of the things that they're thinking about and all the resources that they're creating can be collected and create sort of like an institutional memory is really cool um and i think that I would, or i'd love to see the community category be part of that so if we have community calls there should be a like a forum thread about this week's community call and this is what happened in the community call and here's some of the ideas and here's all the links like a, a show notes for that week's community calls and then people can talk about them uh or, and, and like there's lots of going to be lots of examples of things like that but some kind of like Oh, I wonder what's going on in the community these days or what happened in the last seven days while I was on holiday. Mm -hmm. So where do I go for that? I should go to the community section on the forum and find out. That'd be really cool. Yeah, and I think that also helps us then kind of integrate with what the website, the Scurf IO project is doing, right? So they're looking for, um, you know, this being a landing page that helps people direct. Uh, so if I was a person who was gone for a week and I want to get into that community section, um, I could probably really... Um, we could use Scurf.io also to direct people to that type of stuff or pull from the forum. Um, I'm not entirely certain what all they are considering doing. It'd be interesting to hear from the community cross pollinators if they're here as well, because it feels like there's some utility we could provide them. And maybe I have this um, vision, this glorious vision of someday. Oh yeah, my favorite analogy is this. Um, uh, we have all these different communities in our space um, with their uh, discords. And it feels like little city states and those little city states have little governments and activities and all the rest of it and traditions and very little visibility across all of them. And so what if we had sort of ambassadors that could hang out in different groups and uh, embassies in little groups, so we could have our own little rooms in the bankless channel and bankless or, or uh, DSI labs could have one at scurf or something um uh, and maybe the forum could be a piece of that puzzle too where we can talk about what other communities are up to from our community's perspective yeah i think that would be great i see that fotis is here uh umar did you have a quick question uh i just wanted to ask if the 
if, if there's a place right now in the forum where I could post rampant speculations about crypto things, and um, I, I feel like the answer is maybe not. And so I was wondering if uh, if I would be allowed to post rampant speculations <laughs> in the community side of the forum. Sure. And also, um, if it's a place for maybe more uh, uh, learning activities, like um, uh, one of the things I'm really interested in is like information theory, which is sort of like under underpinning uh, cryptography in a way. Um, and I was wondering if, if that could also be something that if I wanted to just have a discussion with the community about, if I could bring that up in, on that side of the forum. Yeah, so um, short answer to the first thing, uh, the wild speculation is in many ways opposed to the whole entire reason that Scurf exists. So even in the community section, I think that that's yeah. a thing that we would be avoiding. Um, but the learning space I think is potentially very valuable. Uh, and maybe it's something that could be connected with the idea of the um, scurf recommends and like how do we get to a scurf recommend and because like someone's gone through a learning thing. Um, I also want to make sure I get to get time to photos because I think he was specifically called out as a community cross pollinator. So go ahead, photos. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, to respond to Ritz's. Um, dream of the DAO as our digital communities as nation as a city states uh, with their own uh, ambassadors uh, going all over the place well this thing already exists i've seen it in various communities there exist like channels in discord which are kind of like ambassador ambassadorships and they then the, there's this thing where you can connect a channel to another discord channel and get all a feed that is directly uh, drawn from this other community, this other server. And people have been experimenting with that, but um, from my experience, people don't engage with these channels that much, and uh, they are hard to maintain. And if you get a lot of them, you get lost, so people don't even check that. Uh, so like this, uh, this the Discord route is, uh, is, has not been that successful in terms of these ambassadorships. But um, a more active one uh, might be, and what um, I think would be a good um, way to uh, achieve this practically is better ways of reporting and more uh, transparent and inter-community uh, friendly ways of reporting. I mean, reporting is probably the most, and clear reporting is probably the most useful thing that I've seen uh, in terms of knowing what's happening in another community. So I think this is where we should yeah. probably. That makes sense to me. It's yep. getting people to engage in ad discord is, a, is a, an ask because you're requiring their attention and their time, getting them to engage with a meta aspect of the forum that also has mental models of all the other, your network of, I mean, it's a network of chats um, as well is a, their significant operational or cognitive overhead there, I suppose. So I, that's why I'm, I'm, one of the reasons why I'm so excited about the cross-pollinator group is that uh, I think that you're right, that it it requires um, hands-on effort and human direction in a team of individuals that go out and coordinate. I like that model of like this abstraction layer that re sort of representatives of SCURF, but also engaging with their peers in other um, communities directly. So. We had. Uh, and I, okay. And I don't know if if it would be a good idea to ask for reports from other communities. I don't know if that would be too much of a favor, of or if uh, uh, maybe a community would like that. Maybe we could start experimenting with that as cross pollinators. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Like if if your team found some corollary in one or two other. Uh, communities that we're aligned with and maybe you know, find where whoever the photos is over there and coordinate with them and do some brainstorming to find out how what a report would look like not only for scurf but for that community as well and you guys can work on those things that'd be interesting yeah, yeah you related to this yeah, related to that one thing uh, that was on my mind is also, you know, like what is the 
somewhat regular digest or synthesis that community cross pollinators can generate directly to what POTUS was speaking, uh, speaking to. And I know in the idea of people reporting to us or something, or uh, you know, reporting out and providing information for us to include in these digests, uh, we already have some data in that direction. I know this is a recorded call and it's not official yet, so I don't want to, you know, officially uh, put any added pressure to them. But a active blockchain research community told us and their head of governance research kind of like, hey, if you give me a sense of what you're trying to put out every month and what you want from me, I will gladly give you a monthly digest of a paragraph or two on here's the stuff that happened in our community this month. So I think the more we can think of, because there's definitely appetite across many communities to learn from each other and the more we can make it easier of like hey you don't have to be in 12 million discords and you don't have to follow all these things but you could follow the monthly digest and come out on scurf on each content category or something like that that could also uh, be tremendous uh, value add for folks so i think that's going to be part of the fun with the cross pollinator role is trying to think of what is that structure that is both not overly burdensome but not so light that it's not actually full of substance and how do we find that balance uh, so yeah, that's what I'm. I'm really excited to to try to brainstorm and iterate with that group, and we'll make sure to we're going to host a community call on the cross pollinator topic. I think in three, two, three ish weeks. Uh, so yeah, I would love to get uh, the wider scope and uh, community input into what that could look like. We're I'd really love to see now. like this month in communities or something. So here's like there's roll ups that happen for the Ethereum ecosystem, but in newsletters where it's like here's the Here's in these five projects, here's a list item of the 10 things that each project did this month. Um, some kind of connective reporting tissue between each community would be cool because it feels like there's a strangely limited amount of, well, I was going to say cross pollination, but <laughs> maybe I shouldn't. But uh, there's, the communities are learning things, um, and those um, lessons aren't being effectively distributed throughout the rest of the communities, I think. And occasionally people hang out in other people's community calls and then or can be pleasantly surprised, like, oh, wow, that's a great idea. I wonder why we didn't think of that. We should be doing that too. Um, it doesn't feel like there's any uh, predictable mechanism with which those things happen. Absolutely. And I know that at one point there was, a, a I think, CK Capital or one of the, the crypto VCs, <clears throat> they did a This Week in Crypto Research. And I think they ran that for about two years and it was quite popular. Uh, but I, I don't actually know the real story of what happened there. I just know that they officially stopped doing that. But yeah, I mean, I know we're already discussing with the discovery team in terms of research pulse and the role it can play as a newsletter. And I think as we get, you know, if we could theoretically however much time down the line be at a point where we have, hey, here's the research pulse in this week in governance or this month in governance and this month in cryptography and this month in oracles and this month in scaling. Like that would be wildly powerful for the industry. And I think that would be very uh, welcome. Uh, there would be a very welcome reception for that. And I guess slightly teeing us up for next week's uh, reading group and, and conversations. I'm really excited to think about how this frame of networks and what SCRF does can actually help us understand how to better build all of the necessary relationships so that we can actually produce these on a monthly basis because that's also a huge time investment and you need all, a lot of the right people to also uh, have that kind of level of depth of here's what's going on in cryptography or, or security or whatever other domain. And I'm really excited to see some of the activities, sorry for the siren in the background, but I'm excited to see some of the activities that are coming together on the hub side because of the fact that they are getting closer and closer to a lot of the things that we really want to accomplish. And I know one of the conversations that I was part of this week was that, um, again, it's recorded, I don't want to call out names, but a few organizations are bringing together 100 DAO practitioners and their goal is to have 100 DAO practitioners and 20 industry people in mid-August for the purpose of actually writing, like here's how you apply governance research for people in DAOs right now. And like that feels like a kind of output that is so appropriate to what we're trying to support. Uh, and so I'm trying to figure out how we can better work with them because that group is still thinking through how they can actually do that. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot more I'm excited to dig into coming uh, next week with the Impact Networks discussion on how uh, some of the thinking around decentralized research centers will hopefully help us conquer a lot of these challenges in a structured way. Uh, then we can actually start getting into some of this in the near future. Yeah, I'll stop rambling there.
Sounds like there's a lot of good alignment. Uh, Renee, you had some interesting ideas in the sidebar there. I'd love to hear what talent that was up to. If you wanted to expand on those a bit, give access to them, Mike. Sure, happy to, everybody. Um, yeah, so I mean, as you, some of you may know, Talent Dow is getting some research funding support for our decentralized research study, which is an ongoing investigation into how uh, Dow sort of leadership methodologies should be structured. So we've done already a pretty extensive lit review and posted that, and now we're doing interviews, and then we'll do some sort of empirical survey once we have our heads better wrapped around the space. But um. I posted yesterday or last week about um, trying to get more people involved in discussion posts on forum, on your forum. So I posted the source cred link um, and tried to position it as a way of like, hey, this, you know, on one end enhances the talent Dell brand and credibility and get, but on the other hand, it's an opportunity oh, that's interesting. for them to make a little uh, cash in their pocket um, so I don't know what will result in that. I'm really hopeful, though. I would love to see uh, more of us get involved. There's a lot of people that are either um, like scientists that have studied traditional work settings wanting to look more into DAOs or people who work in DAOs that want to learn more about science. So it's kind of a cool group to interact with. Um, and uh, any ideas or you know, initiatives you think are worthwhile to try to create that cross-pollination. I think we're um, very interested in those types of collaborations. No, that's a really cool idea. Actually, it hadn't occurred to me specifically to talk to other communities about the opportunities the source grid can provide them to. So maybe there's something that we can put on our radar to maybe, I'm talking about cross-pollination, but maybe we can go and pollinate somebody else. So maybe we can we can hang out in a talent uh, chat or maybe a community call and talk about source grid opportunities as well. Maybe what we have going on at Scrum would be interesting. Yeah, I'd love for you guys. Like, if there's specific skills or projects or roles um, that you're looking for, like, please, by all means, tap my community. Um, I want our individual people to be successful just as much as I want the overall DAO to be. So, if somebody yeah, can awesome. score a job or a project gig or a one time thing on their own, like, that's a win for me too. Cool. Maybe Paul and Renee, maybe you guys can get together and have some brainstorms about that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be cool. Cool, cool. Right on. I do actually like this idea of this community section also maybe just being like a report in and a report out. Um, I'm going to put some more thought into that and put it in my personal notes, but I kind of dig that as a, you know, a, a coming into us thinking of this as a, um, you know, SCURF community output space, right? Um, thinking of it as a little bit more of a funnel now than I did at the beginning of this, so I'm glad that we had this chat. Yeah, photos. Yeah, this also got me thinking right now that uh, maybe we could use this uh, system uh, of having the forum be open and having a source cred opt-in to actually incentivize other communities to come to the forum and make the reports uh, themselves other than us cross uh, pollinators just going all over the space just for community community getting lost uh, for in uh, discord channels and endless discussions which we've seen is not that effective um so, and so that we as a community cross pollinators can have a better flow to actually uh, oh somebody um uh, uh like uh, Rene mentions this very cool initiative that is happening in um, uh, Talent DAO and we can be more focused. So we can see that and we go directly through that and then we um, can report on that ourselves in the forums rather than just <laughs> being lost all over the place. Yeah, it'd be handy for you guys to have an incentive mechanism or two in your back pocket that you can talk about. Source script would be cool I mean, it's, uh, it's almost rare. It's, I think it's ready, like there's already the incentive mechanism there. Maybe it's there for mm -hmm. us to use. Would you guys have any um, resources to help me get source cred implemented at Talentown? 
we don't actually have a discourse, but I would be really interested. I know they have a Discord um, version as well. Well, we do have the weekly calls like uh, where the community is sort of hashing out uh, these questions, like do we want to expand this to our GitHubs and to our chats as well? How do we manage treasuries? What are we optimizing for in, in the world of source threads? But we also, we do have resources. We can help you guys out with uh, what implementation Sorry, I, looks like. Yeah, I should be more specific. I'm a, a developer that could just help set up the yeah. instance for me. Yeah, it's surprisingly uh, not, well, it's technical-ish, but yeah, we can certainly help you out. Too. Cool. I'll, uh, Brian I'll... would be the person too, but I'm volunteering Brian. <laughs> um, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> but we awesome. can definitely help out. Thank you, Brian. I will ping you. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. All right. So it sounds like we've had we had some good discussion. I appreciate the feedback. I took some really good notes here. Well, I don't know if they're really good. I took some notes. We'll find out if they are really good. Uh, when I go to do the next step. So the next step for me as a result of this community call is I'm going to put in our current meta section a proposal kind of lines out essentially what I said today of, you know, we should add this section, kind of go through some of the reasoning that I had. So a little bit of a repeat, but I will try to also make sure to answer and um, expand on some of the thinking that I had as a result of this call. And that will kind of be the next step um, so we can continue to have that conversation there. If more things pop into your head about this section or how we can use it or how it might integrate with some of the other ideas that are now kind of flowing around here. So um, thank you so much for all of that feedback. And that's what I'm going to do next. That's my promise to you all. Yeah, Rich. Sorry for the question with one minute left, but is there like a launch window or when is this going to happen? Or are you still thinking about it? Uh, so that is going to be one of the things that I will propose in the thread itself because I do not have an immediate launch window. Um, however, it seems like from this call, right? I don't want to overdo it with just assumptions from a call, um, but it seems like this is pretty popular. Uh, it's not like there is a whole bunch of technical necessity to make this possible. Um, I mean, I could see this as you know, we easily have this implemented at some point in July. Um, there's some documentation that would need to be produced. Um, I do like the idea of SCURF having rollout events so that people know what's about to happen and why it's about to happen. Uh, so there's that kind of timing stuff. Um, I would want to make sure that there, the thread is up on the forum for at least 10-ish days, uh, just based on kind of what we've seen from interaction uh, with similar types of posts to make sure that people have an opportunity to discuss um, but then we can get the ball rolling and I'll put some of that date stuff in that post. Sounds awesome. Thanks, man. Cool. And that brings us right to time. So thank you everybody for engaging with me. Any last words from our meeting host, Rich? Um, no, thank you, Paul, for your amazing presentation and for thinking about ways to make our community more community. Like it's a huge lift and I really appreciate your thoughts on this. Cool. Right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody.